So welcome everyone to episode 27, Shark Attack Case Files. So today we're going to do something a little different. We're going to do a video similar to what I've done in episode 19. I'm not going to actually have a documented attack to look at per se, but anecdotal evidence of potentially attacks that may have taken place. Because we're going to look at Alaska. No, so Alaska is somewhere where you know you wouldn't associate with great white sharks but you would associate it with like an abundance of of you know wildlife and you know wilderness untouched land you know the, the last frontier which i think is known as so that's what we're going to do today so let's let's jump right in um and what i've done is i got hold of this uh paper so this paper was written by a guy called bruce a Wright, um 2013 so yeah i took I had to buy this paper so I managed to get hold of it and this guy spent a good deal of time trying to piece together evidence for great white sharks in Alaska so I went through this paper and pulled out what I think is seven pieces of really good evidence to suggest that there not only are there great white sharks in Alaska but potentially somebody has been killed by a great white shark in Alaska at some point because statistically it's, it's more than likely that it did happen than not happened. So the first piece of evidence I'm just going to mention is that there's there's obviously native Alaskan Indian tribes that, that have, you know, been in Alaska way before any any European settlers arrived. And uh, the thing that's tribe is one such tribe and th this tribe were, were preparing shark teeth, ear earrings and necklaces for you know many hundreds of years and there's been evidence of them wearing shark shark teeth or and, and great white shark teeth so and it's clear they knew about white sharks and even in the alaska alaskan state museum there's five pairs of these earrings which are clearly great white shark teeth so these these native american indians clearly knew that there was great white sharks in alaska whether, whether they hunted them or they you know they found dead sharks or whatever but they they prized the teeth so we know that's the first piece of evidence for the existence of great white sharks in alaska so the first sort of so sorry the second piece of evidence we're going to look at um yakutat which is this 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 place here just on the i guess the southern peninsula bit of alaska that goes down near 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 Yukon down here um and in in late 1970 Bruce who's obviously the writer of the paper that I mentioned Bruce took a call in his position of the the staff fisheries biologist so he was in this position at the headquarters office of the commercial fisheries division of Alaska fishing department of game game and fishing and uh during that period, he, he took a call from a guy called Randy Maynard uh, regarding a fishing incident that happened on a salmon trawler near, near Yakutat. So this is obviously back in 1970. And the, the skipper of this boat, this salmon uh, trawler, reported that they were trolling for king salmon when they hooked a large shark. Um, yeah, and the shark fought really hard, but they managed to loop a, loop a rope around his tail uh, and they winched it up on the boom to the deck. And they described it as, as yeah, obviously a large shark. It had white on its underside, grey on the top, and it had a tri triangular dorsal fin. And when they actually slit the belly of the shark open to try and reduce the weight down, because it's put a lot of uh, strain on their on their hauling equipment, the shark actually had three intact sea lions in its stomach, which weighed they weighed the sea lions, and they were they were like close to 800 pounds of dead sea lion, which is about 363 kilos of, of dead sea lion. And they said the shark was uh, 6.1 meters in length, which is obviously yeah, 20, 20 feet, 21 feet, and there, and it had a had a it was, it was it was four feet across, so it was a one 1.2 meters across, and the teeth were over an inch wide, uh, and over an inch long, and they actually saved the jaws of this shark, so they removed the jaws of the shark, but they they did this back in 1970, they didn't have a camera on board, and this is obviously too large to be a salmon shark, which is a shark which we, we know is in Alaskan waters a salmon shark so and these jaws were actually on display at um, the Sitka Hotel in Alaska for many years and uh, it was obviously th this was a great white shark that they encountered but obviously there's no photographic evidence of it but so that's evidence uh, number two and then if we go go to this this um, 
this third piece of evidence. So this third piece of evidence is a is a, is a large great white shark which was beached um, in this in this tidal area here. So I think you you probably pronounce this uh, check you can. So this this area here is really really tidal. So it's a huge huge tidal range. So the water comes in and out twice a day, and this shark actually got beached. So it must have like been in shallow water and then got got stranded. And then yeah, they 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 measured the shark as a very large shark, uh, and this was obviously clearly a great white which which was accidentally stranded up here. And then if we move on to piece of evidence number four, which in this one is is really I find this one really interesting because it's up off Kodiak, and uh, funnily enough, I've actually been I've actually been here I, about seven years ago. I was off here at a place called Geographic Island off the other side of Kodiak, sorry Geographic Bay, and I was there in the summer. And to be honest, it it does feel sharky there. I mean, it it's, it is warm, it's pleasant, although the water's cold, really cold. Obviously, it's not too cold that sharks can't can't uh, live here because it's, it's just like subarctic. So the water temperatures are are in range for a great white shark, clearly. But it's it's pleasant, and there's just so much wildlife there that you could you can imagine that great white sharks do, can can live and survive here. There's just so much for them to eat there, like you know halibut, salmon, seals. There's 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 everything everything for them. So this this uh, fourth piece of evidence took place off Kodiak. So this again, Bruce uh, took another call from a fish, fisherman detailing a great white shark sighting. This is 2001. So this guy was long lining in his in his like 10, 10 meter boat. So it's 10 meter 34 foot boat, and they were trying to catch halibut. So yeah, these halibut are massive. Halibut grow to like 234 kilos which is like 500 pounds they can be like eight foot long which is about 2.6 meters so these fish are huge and so that's a really good substantial meal for a great white you know so the, and as we saw in you know that's a reason made maybe why they went to greenland as well great white sharks because their halibut is such a good food source for them so yeah they were out fishing uh in the in this in this boat and they were they were like hauling in their gear and then they felt the gear go tight so they were hauling in the lot the long line and then something began to tug on the line so they they kept hauling the gear in taking off the halibut and then they they, they, they it did feel heavy so the fishermen they said to, to bruce on the phone they, they said they sensed something was watching them had a funny feeling and then they pulled more more line in and then so all of a sudden they just saw this huge head and body alongside the boat so obviously the boat was 34 foot long and this guy had experience with like salmon shark, sleep, sleep, uh, sleeper sharks, basking sharks, killer whales. So he, he was familiar with all the wildlife in the area. And he said this shark was like six, six foot across, two meters across in, in width. And he said the shark's head was like mid midpoint of the boat. Uh, and, and, and then it went 15 foot past the boat or, or 4.6 meters past, which made it like a 30 foot shark, which is probably, you know, that's probably bullshit. But... At the end of the day, what this guy saw was just a, a, a very large white shark. So, I mean, it would have been like a 20 footer. So this guy, this this shark was like attracted by the halibut. So when they were long lining these halibut, it was when they were pulling the halibut in, it was chasing the halibut in, trying to take them off the line. Yeah. So, yeah, like and this guy said, like, without making eye contact with the shark, he just cut cut the line and sat on the deck just shaking. So he, 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 didn't, want, he didn't want to look in the water. Like why would you? He'd had he'd had enough. He'd had one look was enough for that guy. Yeah, and then evidence number five. This 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 is back in here where that 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 shark was stranded in the same area. Uh, so this was early January two thousand and three, and this guy a guy called Peter Devine and his nephew Carl Hoblet they set off in a in a small skiff, so a seventeen foot skiff, which is about five meter skiff. So a skiff is just like a really small boat with an outboard on the back uh and they, they were they were just uh, adjacent to 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 the island and they, they actually went to harvest some feral cows i mean that must be an alaskan thing like harvesting feral cows i've never heard of that but anyway so they went over to this island to kill some feral cows uh and the temperature um that day when they left the harbour, yeah, it was was cold. It was like minus seven degrees, which was about twenty Fahrenheit. So they left the harbour in this skiff. Then half an hour into the trip, uh, Peter steered the skiff parallel 
to the south end of uh, one of the small islands and the wind began to pick up to about 30 knots and um, Peter kept the skiff about a quarter of a mile from, from the shore sort of parallel just to try and avoid the wind and then his boat was like smacking the waves and then Peter just looked looked back and he, he said he saw this huge triangular dorsal fin about 50 feet behind the skiff like following them and then they could see like the grey colour of the shark as it as it got closer to the skiff. And they said it was longer than the skiff. So it, it was like a maybe a 18 foot great white or 5.5 metre great white. And then the shark swam past the skiff, like parallel with the skiff for a short while. So it just swam alongside them. And the, these guys were like frightened by this. And they said they just tried to speed up as much as possible. They just turned the boat round and uh, gave up on the feral cows and just went straight back to port. But they, they called this in. And they they said that it was a great white that was following their skiff, like a large great white shark. So yeah, that's evidence number five. And then evidence number six, again a little bit further up. This is up up near Prince of Wales Sound area, uh, up around the Needles uh, this place. And this this is a rich area for salmon, seals, halibut. And uh, this guy called Lloyd Helms, he was fishing in in a boat, about a forty foot boat, it's eleven metre vessel, and they were just rod fishing. Um, when they were hooking into some large halibut, uh, and these these fish obviously fight quite hard, and th they they hooked into a halibut, and then all of a sudden the the line just went slack, so they thought they'd actually lost lost the fish, or the line had been cut, and then they said a few seconds later this just massive great white shark just swam past the skiff off the back of the boat, so they were towing off the back of their large boat, they were towing a uh, another a smaller smaller skiff and then they said that it had the halibut in its mouth so the the one that they were reeling in this large great white shark had come up grabbed it and just snapped it off the line and then had surfaced with this halibut in its mouth and it was just consuming the halibut and he, he said that it, it was as big as the skiff that they were towing so they were towing about an 18 foot 5.5 meter skiff behind the main boat and they said that the shark just slid sort of sideways looked up at the people on the boat exposing its underside and then just disappeared with this halibut in its mouth and then they just they didn't see the shark again but that, that's that's crazy so that was that's that was a good one and then the last the last piece of evidence so this is i'll save the best tool yards last because this is off of yakutat again because there's some photo there evidence of this this shark so this, this there was a guy uh he, he was operating like a halibut charter so again it's like a 30 foot boat five five point five meter boat as uh, this, this guy called mark uh sappleton he had a boat called manifest destiny so this was early september 2004 so they were off the off the coast there of yakutat and he had about six clients on board who were ready to fish and the weather was pretty good for september so it's like an equinox i think there so the equal hours of, of sunlight and daylight and then they were just fishing uh, and then one of the clients hooked up a, a large halibut and uh, he, he, uh, Sappleton moved closer to the to the fisherman to try and grab it with the gaff and he just ready to land the fish for one of his clients but then all of a sudden the halibut just sort of pulled away sort of reeled away and the the, the, the rod sort of jerked and bent and just re line just started screaming off the off the reel and they were struggling with it so they realized that yeah something larger had sort of grabbed it and then it sort of let go and they pulled it in and it had a yeah an 18 inch sort of semicircle bite out of the side of the halibut so they they knew that a shark had, had bit it had come up and bit this this halibut and i'll move to the next slide so there yeah i mean there's there's a picture so you can see that just a huge bite radius of a great white shark so they, they they sort of said yeah definitely a great white but, but what actually happened is, is that when they when they grabbed the line and it jerked and halibut, they jerked the halibut from the water. As they pulled it up from the water, uh, like a large great white shark sort of rose up and then begun circling the boat. Yeah, and they said it was no no mistake. It was it was a great white shark, and they estimated it to be about a, about a twenty footer. And these are actually so obviously this is this is a bit. Like the first, the first, some of these first lots of evidence were a bit earlier on, say in 1970s and stuff. But this is like 2004, so they had a camera, and they managed to take these four photographs of this this large great white. So you can see, you can clearly see this this is a great white shark, for sure. And they said it was about a 20 foot, but I mean, I mean, it could, it probably was in the range, maybe anywhere between sort of, you know, 15 to 20 feet. I guess it's hard, it's hard to tell, isn't it? But 
yeah and he, he noted that one of his clients sort of said yeah is that what i think it is is that is that a great white and he said yeah it's a great white so yeah insane but so what what is interesting though just to wrap the video up so we you know it's clear that there are great white sharks in alaska and we we don't, there's no like scientific evidence are they there all year do they migrate there do they do they come from you know the eastern pacific the western pacific like do do sharks from lot like, sort of japan russia and korea do they swim around the archipelagos to to get there <clears throat> or do these sharks follow the salmon sharks and they come up from california no one really knows or are they or are, are these large females are they resident in alaska just because there's so much food to eat no one knows but what is interesting is that alaska like so many people go missing every year in alaska and like many fishermen die every year in alaska and a lot of times they blame it on the weather but i mean there's been cases where like two fishermen have been just gone missing and they find their boat sort of upturned so there was one in like prince of wales sound where we we had that great white shark where they just two fishermen went missing they just found their upturned boat washed up on the shoreline their life jackets were still in there and these fishermen were never found again and like alaska is well known for people just going out in skiffs and then never never been seen again so yeah so i'm sure at some point in in time uh i'd like to put money that somebody in alaska has been killed by a great white shark but i'll i'll not have ever any evidence of it but yeah it's interesting that there are great white sharks in alaska and maybe one day uh somebody does get killed by a great white shark in alaska and there's evidence of it but i mean it's so sparsely populated up there that you know if if it did happen you know you know if a tree falls in the woods it, you know if no, it's no one there to hear it it doesn't make any sound so yeah but anyway it's interesting but different video but hope you enjoyed it laters